Top 10 Interesting Facts About the International Space Station The United States, Canada, Japan, Russia, and many European nations jointly own, build, and operate the International Space Station, ISS, which is managed by the European Space Agency, ESA. When President Reagan commanded NASA to construct a space station within 10 years, the organization's foundation was laid in 1984. Russia launched the ISS's initial module in 1998. Since then, the station has expanded as other nations, including Russia, have installed their own modules. The International Space Station, which weighs 460 tons and is nearly the size of a football field, was launched in 1998. Here are five intriguing details about it that you might not have known. 10. It's actually falling. Contrary to popular belief, there is gravity in space. Between 200 to 250 miles above the planet, when gravity is roughly 90% as strong as on Earth, is where the International Space Station is located. This is sufficient to cause the ISS to collide with the planet. Why then does it not fall? In fact, the ISS is tumbling. However, it isn't colliding with the Earth because it is falling along the planet's arc at a speed that is almost equal to the speed at which it is orbiting the globe. We can state that the ISS is circling the Earth. The Moon experiences a similar situation, it is orbiting the Earth. The ISS is dropping, which is also why the astronauts appear to be floating even though gravity is present inside. The astronauts aren't being dragged in any specific direction because the speed at which the ISS is descending is almost equivalent to the speed at which it is orbiting the Earth. Thus, they simply float. Nine every 90 minutes, the sun rises. Every 90 minutes, the International Space Station makes one circle around the planet. As a result, astronauts see the sun rise every 90 minutes. This indicates that they see the sun rise and set 16 times per day. While we on Earth only get 342 of each, an astronaut who spends 342 days on the islands will see 5,472 sunrises and 5,472 sunsets. It's interesting to note that astronauts on the ISS do not observe dawn or sunset. They can, however, always make out the Terminator, the boundary between the light and dark sides of the planet. On Earth, it will be dawn or dusk at that time for anyone along the line. 8. The first Malaysian space traveler had a prayer issue. The first Malaysian astronaut was Sheikh Muzaffar Shukur. He departed from Earth on October 10th for a nine-day journey to the ISS. Before he went, though, he and his nation ran into some odd issues. Shukur is a Muslim, hence, he must perform the prescribed five daily prayers. Additionally, the journey took place during Ramadan, when Muslims are required to fast. You may recall that we said the ISS sees sunrise and sunset every 90 minutes. As the hour for prayer in Islam is determined by the location of the sun in the sky, Shukur would now have trouble determining when to pray. Muslims must bow their heads in prayer while facing the Kaaba and Mecca. The direction of the Kaaba and Mecca would change every second while traveling through space. In fact, Shukr may move from facing the Kaaba to being parallel with it during a prayer. 150 Islamic clerics and scientists were brought together by Ankasa, Malaysia's equivalent of NASA, to discover a solution to this issue. The congregation decided Shukr should begin his prayer facing the Kaaba and ignore any alterations made after that. If he was unable to locate the Kaaba, he was instructed to face wherever he believed it to be. If that proved challenging, he should just face the earth or take whatever other action he felt was required. The group also decided Shukur didn't have to kneel for prayers if being weightless on the ISS made it difficult for him to do so. Additionally, he didn't have to use water for ablution. He only needed to use a wet towel to wipe his body. He could also say three prayers as opposed to five. It was also determined that since Islam exempts travelers from fasting, Shukur did not need to observe it. 7. Human Politics The International Space Station is not owned by a single country, as we already mentioned. It is owned and was built by the United States, Canada, Japan, Russia, and several European countries. The U.S. segment and the Russian section are separated within the ISS. The U.S. section is shared by all nations, while the Russian section is used only by Russia. The majority of nations that contributed to the creation of the ISS, especially the U.S. and Russia, have carried their political ideologies from Earth into space. 
After the U.S. slapped numerous sanctions on Russia and terminated ties with specific Russian agencies, this reared its ugly head in 2014. One of them was Roscosmos, which is Russia's answer to NASA. There is a problem with this, though. NASA no longer launches space shuttles and relies on Roscosmos to ferry its astronauts to the International Space Station, ISS. NASA and the U.S. would find themselves in an awkward situation if Roscosmos backs out of the agreement or declines to send or rescue U.S. astronauts from the ISS. In fact, Dmitry Rogozin, a deputy prime minister of Russia, suggested that the U.S. should start sending its astronauts to the ISS using trampolines after NASA dissolved its relationship with Roscosmos. 6. There isn't any laundry. The ISS does not have a washing machine. Even if there were, there would not be enough water for laundry in space. Although it's not always the case, one alternative is for astronauts to board the ISS with enough clothing to keep them covered for the duration of their trip without having to do laundry. No one wants to spend $5,000 to $10,000 to send a pound of clothing to the International Space Station. The space aboard their spacecraft is insufficient for them to bring their dirty laundry back to Earth. In essence, they burn their old garments. Of a, aside from all the activities they must perform, the microgravity condition requires little physical effort from astronauts. The ISS's temperature and humidity are also managed. As a result, they can go up to four days without changing out of their garments. Russia launches unmanned spacecraft to the ISS on a regular basis to transfer supplies. These satellites can only travel in one direction to the ISS and cannot return to Earth. In one piece, astronauts unload the supplies and load the spacecraft with trash and soiled clothes after they have docked at the ISS before it is undocked and falls back to Earth. Everything within the spaceship burns up in the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. Five astronauts work out frequently. On every mission to space, astronauts nearly always lose bone and muscle mass. They lose roughly 2% of the minerals in their leg bones for every month they are in space. Although it doesn't seem like much, it soon adds up. Six months is a common length of time for a journey to the ISS, which is long enough for some astronauts to lose one-fourth of their bone mass in certain areas of their bones. Space organizations make an effort to make up for this loss by mandating that astronauts exercise for around two hours every day. Even yet, people continue to lose muscle and bone mass. Space agencies also lack control groups to evaluate the efficacy of these activities because practically every astronaut who travels to space frequently exercises. The equipment used for exercise is different from what we would find on Earth. Because of the variations in gravity, astronauts require specialized gear at all times. For depending on their nationality, astronauts use different toilets. Aboard the International Space Station in its early years, astronauts and cosmonauts shared resources like facilities, food, and even restrooms. Around 2003, when Russia mandated that other countries pay for their astronauts to utilize Russian facilities and equipment, this began to change. The impacted countries started charging Russia for the Russians' use of their equipment. When Russia started charging NASA to transfer U.S. astronauts to the ISS in 2005, things became more challenging. In exchange, the U.S. forbade cosmonauts from accessing its resources, including restrooms. The aforementioned, be proud of the bathrooms in your country. Three Russia could sabotage the program. The U.S. or any other country cannot be directly barred from the International Space Station by Russia. However, Russia might obstruct U.S. access to the ISS indirectly. And the, 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 the Dmitry Rogozin made a suggestion in 2014 that Russia planned to use the funds and resources it used for its space program on other endeavors beginning in 2020. 8. Even though the U.S. wanted to keep sending astronauts to the ISS until 2024, this has happened. Russia may restrict or even prevent U.S. astronauts from accessing the ISS if it actually does scale back or even discontinue its space program by 2020. In contrast, the U.S. could not travel to the ISS without Russia, according to Rogozin. In the event that Russia does something crazy, NASA is already coordinating with commercial space businesses to transport and rescue U.S. astronauts from the ISS. NASA may also purchase the trampoline Dimitri described in the interim. Two, there are weapons on board. On the ISS, there are usually one or two guns. Although they are kept in a survival kit that is open to everyone, they actually belong to the cosmonauts. 
Each firearm has three barrels and can fire shotgun, rifle, or flare rounds. Additionally, they have fold-out tools that can be used as shovels or machetes. Why the cosmonauts keep this versatile weapon on board the ISS is a mystery. But we do know that in 1965, we did know that the weapon could be used for such purposes. Or perhaps it's meant for unwanted aliens who attack the ISS. One Chinese astronauts are unable to travel to the ISS. Because the United States does not want Chinese astronauts on the ISS, they cannot travel there. Any cooperation between the U.S. and Chinese space projects was outlawed in 2011 by the U.S. Congress. The restriction was implemented due to concerns that China's space program has covert military purposes. The U.S. does not wish to directly promote China's space program in order to indirectly advance Chinese military and technological capabilities. Time believes that this is a horrible idea. The U.S. government must realize that prohibiting China from entering the International Space Station, ISS, or ending any cooperation between the U.S. and Chinese space programs won't prevent China from advancing its own space program. Both astronauts and a robot have been dispatched from China to the moon. It also has ambitions to build a brand new space station. Even now, China is considering sending a rover to Mars. That's for now. We appreciate you for being here. View more our channel videos.